freedom. With all this potential, how do we connect our regions and transport the supplies on the industrial scale? That takes you to pillar two. We've just finished with pillar one. I can hear you. Well, we have just finished with Pillar 1, and I would like to introduce you to Pillar 2. I want a nation to give me this moment and pay me this attention because this is truly a vision, a policy, a developmental agenda, and with or without me, it must be applied. So let's go to Pillar 2. Pillar 2 is the water transportation and inter-regional railway connectivity. This is Ghana's first water transportation. Now, as you can see, in the olden days, our fathers really had respect for these natural resources that we came to meet. But today, we don't have value for it anymore. We have to remember everything that we eat from on this land is grown by the water on this land. And there are so many regions that we can connect to by connecting the water. So let me tell you my vision about the water connectivity infrastructure. Now, one thing that I can see in this country, Lake Volta is the largest man-made lake in the world. Why are people not visiting Ghana to view Lake Volta? In fact, what have we done with Lake Volta? I mean, you have billions of dollars sitting in Lake Volta. Maybe we'll talk about it later. But our national grid of water transport, it's something that we should look at. When we look at maybe even going here and pointing to some of these things you're seeing here, okay? And, and I know this brings us to the moment of the sea coming to Kumasi. But as you can see, this is Cape Coast right here, and this is the Gulf of Guinea. So I, I can enlarge it for you to see. So this is Cape Coast. Right here, this river, River Pra, and I'm so sorry to mention what has happened to it, but we'll get to that. River Pra leads all the way to Ofin and goes over there to Anum and goes there to Birim. And to Koforidia. So here is Kumasi right here. <laughs> okay, you can see it. Now what we have to do is something called industrial dredging. You can go back and look at countries like Egypt that have used and dredged and had canals that generate 9.4 billion a year. The canals are meant for a lot of things. And the water transportation are also meant for a lot of things. The irrigation of this country for all our plants and all our crops would need industrial irrigation. So we need to do it one way or the other to support the system. The ferries, the cruises, the leisure, the transportation and the logistics that will move all the industrial products that we are about to manufacture will be pulled on this water. Irrigation and purification and logistics is one of the most important things in this world. Now, I can tell you that Ghana imports almost 89% to 92% of the things in this country. How did it get here? At least a fraction of 90% of that came on the water. So we need to make use of our water. It's very, very important. It will bring so much for tourism. So with the support of us connecting all this water together, we are not only going to have an industrial scale 
to support the agriculture but also we will raise tourism and we will have the biggest distribution channel that connects to the coast and the coast can connect to the world we intend very soon to supply the world with what we're about to industrialize with the 16 industrial revolution now not only that I know I've been talking about waters but I know that's not the only infrastructure that you need for transportation or for logistics the railway network is part of our vision our vision is to develop a comprehensive railway network exceeding 8,000 kilometers that is 1.5 million tons of steel it will be very difficult to import this from outside that's why we have our eyes on the iron ore in the industrial revolution and some is in the eastern and some are other parts of Ghana we will be able to manufacture our own steel and create that 8,000 kilometer railway track that will cost us billions of dollars if we have to give it out on contract and connect and build the eastern corridor the western corridor and guess what the gist of this vision is to also drive the railways to the three borders that faces Ghana the one in Togo the one in uh, Burkina Faso and the one to Ivory Coast when it gets to the edge we stop that is us creating new transportation and logistical path and not remain on the colonial roads that was built for us now we're making our own paths to distribute our own goods but when it gets to the border the government of that country is responsible to continue this is going to give us a railway and a speedway around West Africa once every country continues from there well I like to tell you something it's likely when we get to the border Ghanaians will be contracted to continue the railways because guess what we will have the steel we will have the skills just like what the English did to Europe once you have the skills once you have the funds and once you have the reserves and you have industrial power you're in control and so this is our plan for pillar two and as you can see the water connectivity is important and the railway connectivity is coming to that now the moon needs the sun to shine right so does the pillar two it needs pillar three to thrive so let me introduce you to pillar three and that is our developmental policy three energy city and a technology hub energy city and I know most people haven't probably seen this but energy city is built in countries like Bahrain Qatar many places that's a consolidated energy resources and pipelines and big offices that connects with all mineral resources that produces uh, that produce energy so our energy city is definitely fit to to add value to our industrial vision to be able to create more megawatts to be able to create more substations when we tap into our gas pipelines be able to use our gas and our water as you can see there is hydroelectric power plants we have to expand there will be wind farms there will be solar farms thermal power plants such as natural gas and biomass power plants our energy sources will need to meet our industrial demands and the demands of our people we need to build pipelines and it's very important I mean when I say pipelines pipelines across the regions to support the energy system and the infrastructure but all of this is great to do Ghana just remember we need even to move with the larger step going forward I want to say this 640 million people in Africa do not have access to energy I don't know if you know this it's more than 50 percent of Africans population well let me use this opportunity to introduce a sub division idea 
behind this policy or this vision, and that is introducing the nuclear power plant in this country. We will be one of the main people and one of the best in the world to have taken this idea and implemented. The nuclear energy is rare in the world and more so in Africa. But we have a chance to establish international relationships. We also have the chance to now trade uranium with Niger and Namibia. That's connecting already to be able to build this. We will position ourselves as the heart of Africa. Nuclear power plants does not only reduce the cost per kilowatt, but it just makes electricity affordable, visible, accessible. And we need this because they have it, but we don't. And we are struggling. More than 50% of us, we still don't have light in 2024 when we have uranium sitting. No energy, no technology. But technology is a must. Ghana needs a technology hub. And that's why we've combined technology hub with the energy city. When I say technology hub, I don't know if the old school will really understand what I mean, but I will have to break it down. Okay? It's a combination of Silicon Valleys and, and a whole industrial platform. Okay? To build all technological gadgets that the world demands everybody today is holding an iphone or they have a laptop or or they have a tap but we don't produce these things in our country we have the minerals already we have lithium we have recycling plastic going into industrialization is going to give us the capacity to be able to build our own mobile phones and our own laptops and we can produce our schools with laptops that would teach them what we want them to learn right from the beginning we are in control of our destiny by producing it ourselves and it's there we just need to make sure that we put these plants and get this energy and produce these products and do this packaging and trade it to the world.